we operated 24 hours a day, six days a week uh, in the river with over 100 vessels uh, at any one time and in excess of uh, 500 workers on the site on any given day. When you look at the complexity of this project, all the different moving parts, you know, as an uh, engineering professional, I mean, it really is a challenge. And uh, uh, you look at what we've been able to accomplish, the team we've pulled together, and then executed this project um, in the field, it really is a, an incredible undertaking. There was a combination of different vessels, tugboats, barges, dredges, survey boats, crew boats, monitoring boats, uh, boats for the inspectors, but all told, over 100 every day. The evaluation process that EPA, GE, and the peer reviewers are undertaking is, um, is extensive and far-reaching. We're looking at every aspect of phase one, we're scouring through all of the data and trying to better understand what lessons can be learned from phase one. We collected and analyzed over 18,000 water, sediment, and air samples during the course of the dredging. We were able to uh, understand what happened during phase one. Um, we've generated a tremendous amount of data that uh, gives us a much better understanding of the efficiency of dredging uh, the benefits of dredging and the negative impacts of dredging. So one of the things we saw in phase one immediately was we saw increases in PCBs in water, we saw PCBs increase in fish, and then we saw PCBs increase in air, as well as increases to PCB levels in the lower Hudson River. Prior to dredging, the average PCB concentration in the river was about 30 or 40 nanograms per liter. Uh, on average, during the dredging program, the, the concentration was about 240 nanograms per liter. So a factor of five or six times higher on average. One of the key goals of what we wanted to accomplish in phase one is to understand how much PCB would be liberated from the sediment and sent downstream. And on average, over the course of the project, uh, there was a loss of about 3% of the PCBs that were dredged downstream of the dredge areas. The higher levels of PCB in the water um, caused higher levels of PCB in the fish, which is not surprising because the higher levels in the water mean that the fish are exposed to greater quantities of PCB. During the course of dredging, uh, we, we implemented a number of uh, changes, uh, best management practices to uh, address resuspension concerns uh, that were identified during the course of the project. We used silk curtain containment. We had a rock dike to limit flow into half of the channel. We slowed down equipment. We used enclosed buckets. We restricted um, tugs in shallow water areas. We would dredge certain areas on certain days and certain areas on other days so that we only had a certain amount of PCBs being dredged any given day. Um, we used many different techniques. One of the key metrics that the agency looked at for the benefits of the remedy was how much PCB was going to be sent downstream. And what you want to be able to do is to balance that PCB that's being put downstream during the project with the benefit you see after the project. And there's a tipping point, and you want to make sure that you don't put more downstream over the course of the whole project, both during dredging and after dredging, than is if you had not dredged. And it's important to identify that tipping point so that we don't cross it and essentially undo what we meant to do by the remedy. The remedy was to target bioavailable PCBs. And, as, and what that means is um, as we dredge, we're looking to remove PCBs that have the potential to be in contact with fish and water. 
And so an approach that takes out every molecule of PCB, regardless of its bioavailability, just doesn't make sense. We believe that we can set up a program where we go after what you might call the high value sediments, the sediments that are really most responsible for the PCBs in fish, that are controlling the PCB load downstream. And by targeting the remedy to, to those areas, we can obtain the benefits that EPA believes this remedy will achieve, even if we cannot take all of the sediments out because of the concerns about negative impacts associated with resuspension. Based on what we learned, we think we can design a better phase two. We can target those PCBs, the bioavailable PCBs that are getting in the fish and water and achieve the benefits of this project. We believe that we can um, design a project uh, for phase two that efficiently removes the bioavailable PCBs and achieves the objectives um, intended in the record of decision. GE is looking for some changes for the next phase to make it a smarter, more efficient approach. We can use the science that has developed over the last 15 years uh, since the remedy was uh, decided to really look at how do we move forward. And there is a past, positive path for moving forward.